All right. So today we have Debbie Wildman, the UK mom who became an internet sensation thanks to her uncanny impersonation of Judy Garland. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm well, thank you. So first off, tell me, Debbie, how excited are you to come back to the United States and perform at Carnegie, Carnegie Hall for a second time? Oh, j just a bit, you know. Bit. <laughs> very, very. Mm. It's... Uh, yeah, thrilling. I mean, Carnegie Hall is one of the country's most prestigious music venues. When you performed there last winter, what was going through your mind when you stepped out on stage? To be perfectly honest, don't mess anything up. Don't mess anything up. Don't mess it. Because it's so important. You know, it's such an amazing place and it was packed. And I was just like, whoa. Not that I ever go on with a blasé attitude but just with that venue in particular with the history that Judy Garland has with it it just felt a bit more pressurized I loved it and it was amazing because you really you really feel the history I mean I wasn't I'm not in the same room that Judy was in it's yeah. in Carnegie Hall but it's the Zanker Hall which is a smaller hall within but it's still in Carnegie Hall but um <clears throat> you really feel the history of the place and it was just amazing, but uh, there was a big feeling of, oh, don't mess this up, lady. But once the start, and like the audience reception was so lovely yeah. last time, let's touch wood it <laughs> this time. Um, it really put me at ease. Like when I stepped out and people were really up for it, you know, really there to have a good time. And it was great. The band were great. It, that made me relax. But yeah, initially it was... <laughs> don't get anything wrong <laughs> my bet so tell us what can we expect from judy garland we need a little christmas wow it's very exciting so i don't know um if anyone has heard i did record an album last year and the idea behind it was um it sort of came from the videos that i was doing in lockdown mm -hmm. because people seemed to like my judy impression <laughs> it was sort of songs that judy never did but mm. done as in the style as if she did. Okay. So it was like a sort of what if project. What if she'd heard this yeah. song and recorded it? Or what if certain ones that were written for her that she never got to do, like the songs from Maine, for mm. instance, We Need a Little Christmas, um, that she unfortunately never recorded. It was like, a, well, if she had, would they have sounded like this type mm. project? And that's sort of what this is as well so this is a christmas show celebrating you know it's a nice festive show and i'll be singing a lot of all of the judy christmas favorite mm. songs you know have yourself a merry little christmas for instance things like that and things that she did on her christmas tv special okay but i'm also doing quite a few more modern christmas songs but done as if She'd done them. Okay, Miss Sarah Judy. For instance, okay. little exclusive here. There <laughs> might be there might be a little Mariah making an appearance. Oh not okay. not the actual singer, <laughs> I hasten to add. But um <clears throat> some of her oeuvre, if you know what I mean. Okay, nice, nice. But done as if Judy had done it. Awesome, can't wait. Well, what do you ultimately hope audiences take away from this performance? Oh, just that they've had a nice time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about um, celebrating Judy Garland mm -hmm. as a performer and as a person, like her wit and stuff like that, of which I love. You know, that's what drew me to her in the first place was her artistry and her wit. So it's sort of celebrating Judy Garland as an artist, a feel-good Christmassy show um, that makes people joyful and... Christmassy and just think how great Judy was and have a nice time, really. Okay, perfect, fantastic. Well, you're also going to be joined by a couple of special guests, including actress Margaret O'Brien, who is best known for playing Tootie in Meet Me in St. Louis, opposite yeah. Judy. So, how's it feel to know that you're going to be with someone on stage who knew Judy on a personal level like that? Just fantastic. It really, I was lucky enough to meet Margaret last year okay. and sing on the same stage as her mm. uh sing to her and interview her and we got on really well luckily <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> and she's just such a lovely woman and really interesting and I was overjoyed that she agreed to do the show mm. and uh 
yeah, it's just brilliant. It's mind blowing, really, for me, who I'm basically just a big Judy Garland fan, you know, <laughs> and to meet people who knew her. Mm. Um, it's just great. You know, I'm in nerd heaven, basically, just being <laughs> like. <laughs> yes, yes. So tell me, when did you discover that you had a knack for impersonating Judy Garland? When I was about 12. Okay. Yeah. So I first sort of got into her through uh, my grandmother. Okay. So I was an only grandchild. I'm an only child, only mm. grandchild. And uh, me and my nana got on really, really well. It's my dad's mum. And she was really into all the golden age of Hollywood musicals. That was what she really loved because she went and saw them at the time, you know, when they came out at the cinema yeah. and everything. And my mum and dad really dislike them. They are not into musicals hey. and you know, middle of the road stuff or easy <laughs> listening or that sort of crooners. That's not really their bag. Yeah. And uh, it, me and my nana, she'd say, watch this, darling. And we'd watch Gene Kelly or Fred Astaire or you know, I loved all of them, but when I was about six, she put on Easter Parade, and mm. I saw Judy and thought, oh, wow, she's good, I like her, and so then my nana introduced me to all of the Judy films, you know, mm. and my yeah. nana was a really great pianist, and so we used, I used to sing at the piano with her, and she'd play whatever, you know, she could sight read and play by ear, so whatever you wanted to sing with her, she'd work it out and play it, and I, when I was, yeah, when I was about 12, just, you know, singing around the house, I've always sung. I've never had lessons or anything, but, you know, I've just, you know, much the annoyance of people who live with me, I walk around blasting out songs all the time, you know, just for the enjoyment of it. And I I was singing stuff from Easter Parade and I just thought, oh, I can sound a bit like her if I do that. Oh, no. I thought it was funny, really, mm -hmm. and just said, hey, Nana, next time I went round to her house listen to this and um i sang a bit of i love a piano <clears throat> i love a piano i love a piano i love to hear somebody play upon a piano a grand piano it simply carries me away <laughs> etc yeah. so uh yeah i just did that for her really um and that was it mm -hmm. until However many years later, seven years later or something, when I was at university, mm. you got given the opportunity to just do a show. Yeah. Whatever you wanted, because I was studying performing arts. And um, instead of a thesis, you could put on a show. And I just thought, well, what would I like to do most? Oh, oh, I like, I can do that good singing Judy impression. Oh, I'd like to do a play about Judy Garland. That'd be fun. Yeah. So I wrote a one woman show about Judy Garland for my degree. Oh, nice. And yeah, yeah. So that I worked on the impression more than I'd never done anything with it before that. I was just, you know. Yeah. Um, and then I sort of worked on it. I read all these biographies. I sort of went more deep into it. I'd always been a fan and had her records and stuff, but I hadn't like done big research or anything. Mm -hmm. And then when it was for my degree, I started reading loads and trying to copy how she spoke as well, because I'd never tried talking like her. Yeah. And then I wrote this sort of uh, hour long, or maybe just under an hour, 45 minute long one woman play mm -hmm. with songs. Yeah for my degree and that's sort of where I went more into doing it yeah okay okay yeah and then then nothing happened for years and years <laughs> and then I sat on the internet <laughs> and then you started you started posting those videos during the pandemic just to kind of give some people like a little little happiness since it was such a dark time in 2020 so you were just like giving, giving them some laughter some joy that's how you kind of went viral and kind of became an overnight success correct yeah, yeah. It wasn't intended to be mm. like for a career or anything at all. You know, it had been 13 years since I'd done anything professionally performance wise. You know, I tried being a singer actress in my early 20s and I did a few bits and bobs, and never really got anywhere and gave it up because I had to earn money. Yeah. <laughs> and got jobs and, and did all that, you know, and became a mum. And then lockdown hit. And I just thought it was something nice to do for my friends who were by themselves. Because, yeah. you know, when you have to self-isolate, some of my friends live alone. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty grim, you know. And also it was difficult 
as I'm sure you remember, you know, you're sat at home thinking, well, what do I do? What can I do? And I had a two year old at the time. So, it was, you know, mostly it's mumming. OK, let's uh, make a rocket out of a cereal box because my husband worked the whole way through it. So it was just me and Sadie. And then in the evening, I was like, I want to do something for me, you know, and it would be nice. My mates who are by themselves, maybe this will cheer some people up was yeah. Really, all I was thinking, I had 600 friends on Facebook and I thought, you know, that'd be nice. Maybe that would be nice for someone, might cheer someone up. I'll do a different song every day and, you know, that they might like it. And and that was it, really. And then they sort of caught on. And did you, like, gain the attention of, like, millions of Judy fans? <laughs> yeah, which is nice. <laughs> Was it kind of was it overwhelming that you kind of just saw yourself rise to internet fame? I wouldn't say overwhelming. It was just really nice. It okay. was surprising, surprising and really pleasurable, and like it, it was a really nice surprise. And it was a real silver lining to what was a horrible time. To yeah. be honest, it was. It was um, yeah, surprising and nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet definitely. Do you know if Liza has caught wind of your videos? I have no idea. No idea. I don't know. I've I've not heard from her, mm. but I've heard from a couple of people who say, "Oh, she's seen you. She likes you." But who, I don't know. Oh no. Okay. Okay. So, like, think of the moment. Like, if you ever got to meet Liza, what would you say? I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't think I'd be very eloquent. <laughs> I love her as a performer as well, yeah. you know, and she seems like a lovely person too. So I wouldn't want to talk too much about her mum because yeah. I wouldn't want to be disrespectful of her as a person mm -hmm. and as an artist, you know. Um, yeah, I'm sure she loves her mother and she loves her mother's work so she'd be happy to hear it i'm sure but i wouldn't want to go overboard on like yeah. <laughs> all about your mum and not you you know exactly, I, get um, that. I don't know i'd just love to meet her and just you know say how great she is and mm. that i think she's brilliant and i also love her mum and <laughs> that's be a, it really you know, like a full circle moment for you yeah yeah, well, it would it would be lovely because I think she's a fantastic performer. My God, I watched um, Cabaret for the first time when I was about 13. Mm -hmm. And I say my, my mum and dad don't like musicals. My mum particularly hates musicals. But my mum said, you should watch this film. It's okay. brilliant. And if my mum says a musical is brilliant, <laughs> my gosh, it is. And so I watched it in my attic bedroom on VHS, one of those ones that came in an extra big case because it was an ex rental from the video <laughs> shop. Yeah. And so um, when it got to the bit, you know, screw Maximilian, mm -hmm. I do. So do I. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, whoa. Mm -hmm. but, um, she's just brilliant. I've seen her live in concert twice. Um, <laughs> luckily enough, I've been to see her twice. And She's fantastic. She's lovely. Um, yeah, I just think she's brilliant. And everything I hear about her, you know, she just sounds great. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear that, but... Yeah, definitely, definitely. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe sometime. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed, yes. Now, do you do other celebrity impre impre impressions as well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. loads of different ones. Yeah, who else do you do? Uh, Shirley Bassey. Okay. I really like doing with Shirley. Um... I mean, it's a bit more, it's not quite as studied as the Judy one. It's more silly, but I'm a big fan of Shirley Bassey's. Um, mm. My mum is from Cardiff, like Shirley is. Okay. And I've had her vinyl records since I was really little because I had my own record player when I, what's that? That's not a record player. But I had my own record player when I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. um, so I can do quite a, I don't want to sound big headed, but um, I can do quite a good Karen Carpenter. Okay. Uh, Patsy Klein, um, Marilyn Monroe, Julie Andrews. And what was really good about doing these songs a day mm. was it was something I never would have done. 
like I would have thought it was big headed yeah. if not for the pandemic I wouldn't have done it because I would have thought oh, in a very English way you know, oh, so it's showing off isn't it yeah, oh, yeah. look at me sing oh, oh, oh no 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 but because of the pandemic I sort of thought oh pfft, hey and I played a backing track through an old phone and recorded myself on an iPhone like this and I had because it was one every day you know, there's certain songs that you maybe go to a karaoke bar and you know you can do. But yeah. once I was on like day 78, I was sort of thinking, what am I going to sing today? So I was trying things that I'd never tried before. And I always thought, oh, I'd quite like to sing that. And then I'd just do it. And it, it gave me the impetus to try things I'd never tried. So I always sort of thought to myself, possibly I could do quite a good Julie Andrews impersonation, but I'd never done it other yeah. than, you know, in the shower to myself. So it, it did give me a bit of a boot up bottom to sort of have a go at doing things and try things out yeah. to people um, that I never would have. And so I found I could do sort of some impersonations and stuff. Not that I'm, I wouldn't class myself as an impersonator or anything. It's just something I do for fun yeah. that I sort of found I could do, sort yeah. of. You know, it's sort of singing impressions, really. But I've always liked mimicking, not random people, but sort of celebrities, you know. <laughs> I'm not mean. I don't like copying your voice once you've gone off the phone. But, um, you know, like at secondary school, everyone sort of liked, I did an impression of Edina from Absolutely Fabulous, you know. Hello. It's darling. Bloody buggery hell. All right, silly. So that sort of thing. I've always done silly stuff like that. And it was a bit like that. And I got to sort of expand who I could have a go at, Cher. I, that was the first time I ever sang it in front of an audience ever I by myself. I was 11 and at primary school and we did like a sort of talent show. And I decided there was a show in England called Stars in Their Eyes. I don't know if they had it in America where mm. members of the public got up and pretended to sing as various celebrities. Might I can't think of it off the top of my head, but we may have something so, similar in a way. I mean, we have yeah. so, so many like talent competition shows here in, in the United States. It was it was used to be quite popular in England in like the nineties, okay. and uh, we did a version of that for our you know little school thing. And I decided I'd be Cher because I thought, oh, I can I can sing the Shoop Shoop song. So that ages it. It was probably about nineteen ninety three, mm. and. Um, that was the first time I sang in front of an audience. And I don't think the audience were expecting it because this little short fat kid with the, took my glasses off to do it. I've got contacts in now. <laughs> got up and just went, does he love me? I want to know. Doing a share impression. Mm -hmm. And uh, I loved it. I had such a good time and people liked it. And that sort of made me think, oh, this is fun. You know? Oh. So it's something I've always sort of done, but not, with a view to anything particular. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You never set out to do this. You were just having fun and it just led you to where you are today. Which is nice because I think I think also people could tell that maybe mm -hmm. on, on the internet when I was, <laughs> when I was um, doing it. I think people can pick up that you're maybe not doing it on purpose as a sort of look at me. I'm yeah. going to be a star. <laughs> look at me. Aren't I great? It was more a... Uh, hey, is mm -hmm. this cheering you up? Are you a bit down? How about this? You know, yeah. I think people can sort of tell. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. I agree for sure. Well, like you mentioned earlier, you released a studio album and that was called I'm Still Here. And that was an honor, also an honor of Judy's 100th birthday. Do you have any um, upcoming albums in the, works, in the works right now? Well, hopefully there's there's plans okay. because you know we're getting some absolutely beautiful orchestrations and arrangements done for this christmas show yeah it would be a shame if it was just for one performance exactly. to have these lovely arrangements and orchestrations so the hopes are that there will be a, a judy christmas album hopefully next okay. year okay awesome because we've got um steve orich doing the orchestrations and he won a grammy he was the orchestrator for jersey boys okay. so he did the orchestrations for i'm still here um what is also really lovely for me is that the whole process is really collaborative because mm. i'm a huge judy nerd yeah. and i know my voice and i know 
you know, elements from songs and this and that and that, they really let me have an input into working out the arrangements with oh, Steve, yeah. which is brilliant. You know, there's he's he's in Florida some of the time and we're leaving voice notes for each other at like completely different times. And I'm going, how about if we have bongos? <laughs> this was last year on, I'm still here. But, you know, for things like this, I don't want to do any spoilers for what's coming up in December. But, you know, we could use a bit from that and put it in there. And what do you reckon? Send. And then, you know, <laughs> but it's really nice that these real talents, you know, these giants of the sort of industry cool enough to go oh, okay that's a good idea sure i'll put yeah, that okay. in mm -hmm. it's really refreshing really nice yeah for sure they're listening to your input and that's that's a, yeah. great, that's a great part about a collaborative process i mean as long as you have equal say that's it's a, it's a great working partnership yeah yeah and it's been it's been really nice and really satisfying you know mm -hmm. for sure great all right debbie well how can one stay up to date with you the best oh um Either look on my Facebook page, uh, which is just my personal face. Because, <laughs> I mean, this is all dates from that, you know. It's just my Facebook page. Um, or the at scottstander.com. So mm -hmm. Scott is my agent okay. slash manager who saw me on Facebook and contacted me and said, hey, I'd mm -hmm. like to work with you. And I was like, all right. <laughs> As if, uh, nothing's going to. Oh, it's real. Oh it's my real. God. Yeah. You know, initially I was like, oh, you're from Hollywood, right? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. It's real. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, on scottstander.com or Debbie Wildman Facebook or Deb Wildman Instagram. Okay. Although I'm not great at Instagram. I should do more on that, really. But I don't quite get it. <laughs> <laughs> so Facebook's probably the best way to go. Okay. okay. Perfect. Well, then before we wrap up, are there any other upcoming projects or anything else you would like to mention or plug at this time? Oh, thank you. Um, I am singing at Crazy Cox in London, which is in the Brasserie Zedell, which I'll be doing a cabaret show mm. as myself. I'll be doing a bit of Judy in there, but there's also lots of other stuff and just me singing as me. And that's on the 6th of January, which is a Saturday, if anyone happens to be in London around that time. Um, I will hopefully be doing another show in London, which is Judified, at the beginning of March. Can I get back to you and tell you what date? Oh, yeah, Scott's been yeah. me. I think it's the 5th. I think it's the 5th of March. Okay. Oh, no, I should have phoned up on this. Sorry. <laughs> well, you, you'll update everything on your social media and website. So we, we'll, we'll yeah, yeah, I'd just like to keep everyone on their toes. You know, that's yeah. that's my. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to get you to look at my um, Facebook and my socials, as they call it. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Fantastic.